Take a look at these residential communities. They're located all across the United States. In New Mexico, Washington State, Colorado, and in Florida. These communities have several things in common. They all have beautiful homes, built in close proximity with nature, and good property values. Who wouldn't want to live here? But they all have something else in common. Every one of them exists in areas naturally prone to wildfire. And because of that, communities like these have had homes destroyed during a wildfire. In Lake Arrowhead, California in 2007, nearly 200 homes lost. 78 homes lost in North Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. Silver City, New Mexico, 60 buildings destroyed. And Valley View, Washington, 10% of the homes in the community burned. Just 20 miles away from Valley View is another very similar community, River Bluff Ranch. It too has elegant homes intermingled with nature along with excellent property values. But there's also something different about this development. It was designed from scratch to survive a major wildfire with little or no help from firefighters. So what did this community do that was so different? As a developer, the more you can master plan and pre-plan, the better. Meet Chris Heftel. It's wintertime in Spokane, Washington. Chris is touring the properties he developed called River Bluff Ranch. And so what we're trying to sell in terms of a marketable product is a, a home site that gives you privacy and view, while at the same time, a, a sense of modern amenities and conveniences and safety. And, um, like all developers, Chris wanted to create attractive properties that would yield a good price and sell quickly. When you develop in the interface areas, uh, the developer's got to take a look at what, what is his final product? What is it that is going to attract people to this area? But he had another goal in mind, to make his properties safe during a wildfire, because it was the right thing to do, and because it made good business sense. Fire safety is one of those factors that has to be incorporated into your overall planning. You can enhance the marketability of your product and control your costs while at the same time doing it in a way that improves your fire safety. But how do fire safety features enhance the marketing of properties? Why should buyers care whether their homes are built to survive a major wildfire? After all, isn't that the firefighter's job? to save everyone's property? District Fire Chief Ed Lewis. First thing I'd like everyone to understand is that if you live in this setting, in a wildland setting, it's, it's, it's not the if, it's when a fire is going to occur and affect you. We have a great amount of resource in our agency. However, when you look at a fire and how rapidly a fire will burn, in particular with those fuels on that topography, you simply cannot protect those homes. We don't have resources on a bad day to cover everyone's home. Uh, I'm sorry if, if, if that offends anyone, but that's a fact. It's a harsh mathematical reality. No fire department has enough equipment to protect hundreds of homes during a major wildfire. But it's also true that developers can make their communities significantly safer by implementing some basic firewise principles. Principles based upon proven scientific research. So right from the beginning, Chris reached out to fire experts and like fire protection agencies everywhere, they were more than happy to help. My first response was, oh my goodness, we have these 10 acre tracks scattered across a piece of topography that has heavy fuels, it's a south-facing aspect, it is set up to burn, it just hasn't burned for a while. So what we have here, Ed, is the ridge top is where we put the road. He's a developer, and so he was thinking, how do I maximize these sites from a development perspective? We are thinking, okay, we don't want to interfere with that effort. So we sat down early on and said, okay, how can we work together 
The experts recommended safety solutions based on our understanding of the physics of fire. Washington State Fire Prevention Specialist Guy Gifford. We need to think about this from a holistic approach. Let's start, let's not retrofit something. Let's think of how to make this area fire-wise from day one. Contrary to popular perception, wildfire is not some giant tsunami-like wave engulfing everything in its path. Science tells us that we can reasonably estimate fire behavior because it spreads from fuel source to fuel source, such as trees, dry grass, shrubs, and even structures, which means that, given the types and locations of fuel in a particular area, you can determine with good accuracy how a wildfire will progress. For example, during extreme conditions, wildfire can burn intensely through densely packed trees, moving from treetop to treetop. It can also advance intensely through thick, dry underbrush. But in an open field of dry grass, fires often burn with less intensity and may not burn at all across a well-landscaped lawn. The team helped Chris put this knowledge to work. What we try to do is prevent fire getting the crowns of trees, and we can do that by thinning the trees, putting gaps of fire breaks in the air so the fire can't go from treetop to treetop to treetop. Chris thinned out the forest, which not only reduced the community's exposure during a wildfire, it increased the attractiveness and value of his properties. Where I'm standing right now, you would not have been able to see any of that horizon back before this property was developed because the trees were, were too overgrown and uh, un unmanaged. From down below as you're coming up the county road, this home looks like it's nestled in the trees. There's a lot of sense of privacy, and yet because of the selection of tree removal, this home has a spectacular panoramic view to the east. When it came to placing the new homes, the team had to consider the topography of River Bluff Ranch. Science tells us that wildfire accelerates quickly when moving up hills or canyons because the flames heat the vegetation above it as it advances up the slope. Initially, the plan was to situate homes on the sides of the hill, which put them in the line of a potential fire. So it was time to go back to the drawing board. We started moving homes, or potential homes, off of that hillside up into blocks of homes that would be much easier for us to protect should a fire occur sometime in the future. Ideally, you'd be set back from the slope so that when the heat rises, it misses the home. Relocating the homes not only moved them out of the path of an encroaching fire, it enables firefighters to be more effective in defending the homes in the event they need to and it didn't cost Chris anything extra. He also re-engineered the roads. They now serve as fuel breaks, places where an advancing fire could stop or at least reduce in intensity. And they're properly graded and wide enough to allow fire equipment to enter and homeowners to leave at the same time during a crisis. It's important for the developer to take a step back and look at the overall product of what he's trying to create and consider evacuation to be sure that their roads are as good as they can be for the price point they're trying to create. When it came to dealing with old logging roads, the team got creative by turning them into recreational paths. We have open spaces that have been opened up and cleared out, so they become both a fire break as well as another type of amenity for the association. Fire Chief Lewis also persuaded Chris to install water tanks for firefighters to access during a fire. Chris then buried his utilities and power lines. As a result, they won't endanger residents or firefighters during a fire. This decision, too, made the development more attractive to home buyers. So how beneficial are these firewise features? Not long ago, a wildfire occurred in nearby Valley View, Washington. It, too, was built in natural surroundings. But unlike River Bluff Ranch, it was not designed with the threat of wildfire in mind. Mike Thompson fought the Valley View fire. The undergrowth was very thick. There was a lot of dead trees that had fallen. And you could see in that particular fire uh, the impact that that had and how quickly that fire moved through the neighborhood. We lost 11 residents and four outbuildings. Unlike Valley View, by planning ahead long before the bulldozers arrived, Chris made his community far more likely to survive a major fire.
but River Bluff Ranch is also an unusual development in another respect. Unlike most communities, the property lots are so big that the homes are spaced far away from one another. If a fire were to start, a home wouldn't ignite its neighbors. But what about the typical development? One where houses are built right next to one another. What happens to them during a major fire? One answer can be found across the country in a residential development called The Farm at Carolina Forest. Located in South Carolina, this popular community of 1,100 homes abuts the natural beauty of the Carolina Bays. Residents like C.C. Alt received a wake-up call from the recent fire in nearby North Myrtle Beach, where dozens of homes were lost. Uh, unfortunately, a couple years ago, the fire was in our backyard, about a mile away, so it, it really did put a scare in us, and we instantly tried to figure out ways to make ourselves safer and have um, a good chance of surviving a wildfire. Residents and prospective home buyers are right to be concerned about wildfire and dense developments. South Carolina senior staff forester, Mike Bazo. We had winds gusting 40, 50 miles an hour, embers flying ahead of the fire, so you saw lots of spot fires. And that's where we get into trouble with these kind of neighborhoods. There's only about 15 feet between the homes. And if one home catches fire, just the intensity and the heat from that home can ignite or, um, or uh, damage the home next to it. And you kind of get a domino effect through this neighborhood. When properties are this close, the survival of each structure is dependent on the entire neighborhood. Building a property that isn't firewise runs the risk of having it ignite its neighbors. Firewise guidelines protect homes by focusing on reducing potential fuel sources, especially within 30 feet of the home. The goal is to alter or stop the path of a fire approaching the home. Fuel sources for an encroaching fire can be anything from vegetation to a nearby structure. On top of that, embers floating long distances can land on a home and ignite it. In each instance, the kind of materials that the home is built with will largely determine if it catches fire or not. In dense neighborhoods like this, choosing fire-resistant siding is crucial. When you have heat exposed to that within 30 feet or less, there's going to be some uh, damage done to that siding, uh, possible melting of the vinyl siding, and exposing that house to additional flames. So I would encourage developers to look at other options besides flammable siding, such as vinyl. Use something less flammable, such as a, a, a fiber cement board type, a brick, uh, even some of your um, wood siding, especially if you're gonna be building up next to vegetation such as this. Back in River Bluff Ranch, Chris Heftel made sure the homes were built with fire-resistant materials. So here's a good example of what the final product looks like. We have a house that has firewise siding, concrete-based products in their siding, cultured stone, fire-resistant roofing and materials. But fire safety involves more than building materials and thinning vegetation. Developers, when they build a community, are not just building homes. They're trying to build a community, a lifestyle, a place where people will want to live long term. And the rules, the Tom Skiba of the Community rule. Associations Institute knows that this is best accomplished when developers write some basic firewise guidelines into the homeowner's documents. Well, covenants are an incredibly powerful tool because they can bind every homeowner in a community in a very specific contractual ways. More importantly, they can make firewise principles part of the culture of that community forever. Back in Spokane, Chris Heftel wrote Firewise Rules into River Bluff Ranch's original documents. It didn't cost him anything as a developer, and his community now has a framework for upgrading their own fire safety over time. Covenants are difficult to change. They're intentionally designed to be difficult to change. Rules are how covenants are enforced. Writing them flexibly allows future association boards to modify those rules and how they're applied and implemented to ensure that changing conditions in the community are taken account of. By leaving the right tools in place, the community is able to work together long into the future. Instead of getting one plus one equals two, if neighbors working together, you get one plus one equals four. So you can leverage your work with your neighbor's work and you help the community. But it isn't all about safety. Being firewise also benefits the bottom line for developers and homeowners alike. 
designing the community with FireWise principles is a low cost way to enhance the value of that community and make it more desirable over time. In the long run, when you realize it's for your benefit as well as the benefit of all your neighbors, I think it's a very small price to pay. We've got the and realtor issue. Steve Wallen knows it gives him a marketing do. advantage. I'm pretty proactive on, at talking about FireWise. We have a, a big billboard type sign right inside the gate that tells that we're a FireWise community. And a lot of people will say, well, what does that, you know, what does that mean? I think they get a whole new perspective of what they should, what they should be looking at. And so um, I feel like it's an advantage to me. And I think after they go look other places, they realize, huh, what have you done to protect my investment? It was a very comforting thing knowing that the FireWise was in place and that people had thought about this and that they were taking proactive measures to minimize the exposure to fire danger. It made a difference as far as uh, our interest in purchasing the property here, absolutely. Whether you're in Washington State, South Carolina, or anywhere in the country where a development intermingles with nature, with good planning and only minimal additional cost, FireWise principles can protect property and potentially save lives, while at the same time creating an effective sales advantage for developers. You try and balance that all together and end up with a very beautiful product where it's very enjoyable for somebody to live, safe, and uh, retains a lot of the natural beauty. We feel pretty good about what we've got here. We have dramatically reduced that risk, and we all are very comfortable with what has been done.